So we're getting pretty close to the end now. Um, we're gonna we're jumping onto the hair now, which is actually kind of going back a little ways from uh, some of the texturing that we've done on the face. You can probably notice. Um, but that last render was actually what it looked like with the hair that we had from the first DVD. quick pelt map that I ran on the last one just to get the idea across. So we're going to recreate this so that our texture map we made um, actually drives the, the way the hair grows uh, in, a, to, in a sense. But it'll make sure that any hair tweaks that we do on the color map will be very easily transferred over to the hair map uh, that the hair grows from and that the length grows from. So first we just want to grab all these little chunks where the hair should grow. Little, and then we're just going to um, Clone to a clone. Detaches clone, I should say. And there we go. Let's take a look at the uh, UVs. It's just like the uh, just like the face map. I'm just gonna call it hair. I put it on channel one since I believe all of our hair settings are on channel one right now, and it's just it's quicker to do this than have to go through and change everything. So you can see this is quite an old version of the of the uh, character, the, the character's color map, but might give you an idea of where we came to um, in the last chapter. Uh, this part is just duplicating a lot of hair, really. And then we turn it to black and white. Now this is what happens, basically. Anytime you wanted to uh, update this, you would just do this kind of thing. You'd finish whatever hair edits you were doing, make a new layer, Collapse it all to the bottom, and then um, just uh, invert it. And then paint out the, the areas that you know you don't want hair to grow at. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of a problem because some of these maps that we use have a, a bit of a shadow being cast. So we're going to have to change uh, a couple little things here and there. But this is a great start for what, where we want our hair to grow from. As you can see, I'm fading back some of those areas. And I'm going to speed stuff up here get to the more interesting stuff. Okay, back to Max. Pretty sure all of our hairs have already been selected, that's good. And I want to make sure that this, as you can see, this is the old weird pelt map that we had, so it's time to update that. And we're in TIFF mode, so let's go to All Files and Hair Cap. And obviously this is really splotchy, so he's going to have some really thinning hair in a lot of areas, so we'll fix that. Um, it's still using the old one, so we'll have to drag that on. Sometimes even though you instance it, it doesn't actually instance. Hair effects can be pretty finicky, so you gotta make sure things are actually changed when they say they changed. And then let's see what's applied to this. Okay, we've just got our uh, skin shader on there. But I actually want to see what it looks like with the hair mask, because I think that would come in handy. It's really where the hair is flowing from. And just like before, we want to turn renderable off and at very least turn see-through on, but really I like to display his box. It makes it easier to select later on when we have all these little hairs. Um, I guess I'm not going to do that right now, but usually something we do just to make sure that it's really easy to select that hair cap. I still have to make the left and right sides of this. And then I have to change the, um, the face IDs on this that are being used in the environment settings. Alright. Gonna grab our hair caps here and see what they're actually doing. Or maybe. Let's 
All right, there's the old hair mesh. Want to see where the actual flow of Because the more um, verts you have, the more hair is going to be growing on there. That's that's why I put this turbo smooth on. And I'm going to put an edit poly on top of that, so I don't have to collapse the uh, turbo smooth in case later on I want to bring it back down. So I changed the material ID to two, and you can see it already started growing hair. So we've got some hair growing already. Very exciting. I want to go look at this environment and see what's going on here. And we didn't have the right one being grown before, so now we've got we've picked it on both. And we want to assign that shader to both these because these are new hair effect. They're not the same as the old ones. They're they're brand new, so we have to assign a new uh, a new shader to those two. Otherwise, I'll go back to default. So once this opens up again. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're working on the hair is that it's good to do just little edits here and there um, because if you don't know exactly what every little change you do is going to do and then you realize that you've made things a lot worse than you had it, it's better just to know that you did maybe one or two things before you, uh, before you have to go back and try and solve your, your problem again or at very least save a lot of iterations. Which is a good idea anyway because the hair effects can tend to crash max quite a bit especially when you copy and paste settings between two things. So let's take a look at what this all does. There's the old hair. There's the new hair. You can see it's quite a bit thinner because we've, we've actually, the map that we have is quite a bit uh, more black and um, rides a little bit higher on the head than the old one we made. So first we're going to change in the color map. Just by copying pacing and bringing that down a little bit. You can see it's pretty high on his forehead. Which isn't always a bad thing, but makes him look a little older than I want. To the selected layer invert it and turn it to black and white and crank that way down and, and crank the whites up so we can actually get some white effect going on here and then I'm just going to copy this uh, really mask this off There we go. And now, we could duplicate it and put it on a screen just to bring it out a little bit more of the natural kind of look. And then just paint in um, this white color, which is still quite thin compared to what we want to do. So we still have some more changes to do. And I also want to save the, the, uh, the, the fuse map that we made because we did do some changes. First, I want to edit a few of these splines. They're, they're just not really getting the kind of look that I wanted. Some are kind of sharp looking and I don't know. So once again, it's all a matter of just of tiny edits that can kind of get the effect that you want. Especially when it comes to hair. Alright, so you can see what our hair cap does right there. It's a interesting look.
See that? That rides pretty far back. Might not be bad. It looks like Hong's design kind of had that going, so I think we'll leave it. So the, one of the problems we were having was a lot of these splines were actually being uh, drawn from an area where there was no hair um, being drawn officially because it was on a uh, black area. So we're just going to snap these root points into the white. And once again, we want to just stagger this a little bit better. It's kind of getting a little uh, one-sided. Or two-sided. <laughs> so we may want to adjust this map a little bit more too, but for right now, let's just try and keep the hairs growing all around. Now for some edits. We want to make sure we have the right hairs on here. That's good. Let me pick a few of the middle ones. Looks pretty good to me though. Let's take a look at this one. It's good that he had a, a couple of those hairs. It's not a bad idea to have them um, share the two the two sides. and then each one specifically goes off one or two. And you can kind of get a, a little bit more, if, if you get a bald spot going, that's a good idea to do. We're getting some kind of weird effects, mainly because our two colors are so drastically different. For one thing, he should have much darker hair. So here's a quick trick to make darker hair. I'm just going to uh, paste it, invert it, multiply, and then set that down to a bit lower. And we just want to fill these areas in because then we're just going to take this and turn it back into our hair map. It's kind of our inverted hair map at this point, but. little more work on this and then we'll be ready to jump back into Max and see how this looks. And Okay. We invert it again. Go back to multiply and Set it way down. We don't need it to be nearly that dark, but we do want the hair not to be quite so blonde. Since we use me as a reference, I've got pretty blonde hair, so that's not a... You can see it's a little sharp, though. It doesn't quite look right. I'm going to feather it, invert, and start deleting that. It's okay if the edges are a little bit softer than the, uh, the middle. The edges aren't very soft there, though. I'll fix that up a little bit. Just duplicating those the more wispy hairs that were in the texture map. Saving it out. Go back to max. Now we're going to change these colors a little bit, I think. Alright, so... I want to shade the, the bezier and middles on both of these. Would be nice if there was some way to kind of, um, I don't know, keep a, only have one hair effects and then have it understand um, to, to part in two different ways. But right now you
the thickness 0.05. I'm adding a little bit of curliness here too because I, I don't want his hair to look quite so uh, combed. I want it to look a little messy. So I'm going to add a little bit of random stuff. Um, and the curliness is a good way to do that if you keep it low. Kind of breaks things up a little bit, as you can see right now. Got quite wet hair looking right now, so that's not very good, but it is a start. <laughs> it's looking a little funny right now, but this is the start of getting it to look nice. Obviously that dark color just does not work well with his head. So we adjust that down. Actually a little bit darker. I've only been adjusting the root though, so let's see. Not quite there yet, but it's getting there. Thickness might be a bit much, so we'll bring it back to 0 0.02. I think we usually find that 0.02 is about about right for what we want. And maybe a little denser. It was getting a little sparse in some areas, but it was just th so thick you couldn't really tell. And once again, we'll do a quick render to take a look. Oh, that might be a little thin. <laughs> Ah, 0 0.002 for the thickness on this. I'll cancel this one too. There we go. Instead of 0 0.02, I had 0 0.002, and that's uh, that's pretty dang thin. All right, we'll cancel that render. Now here, we, we're adjusting the map channel. I, I explained in the last one how this works, but the, the map channel option there, um, whatever you have for channel one, if it's uh, a mid by strand or cylindrical, that's how it's going to control the mapping for each channel. So for this, um, we actually had them backwards, so I had to, I had to flip those two to be um, channel one to be a mid um, from a midder uh, and the other one to be from strand. And the computer froze, so hang on one sec. You can see we have the curliness. We also adjusted the um, a little bit of the clumping radius, kept it a little bit lower. Now that we've changed that, let's take a look and see what happens here. We've also turned on uh, shade bezier and shade middle, which is going to add a, quite a bit to our, our render times, and I don't think it's going to look too much better. If anything, it's probably going to look quite a bit worse. Uh, usually that's pretty good, but we have so, so much hair being generated right now, it's uh, it's going to make kind of a mess. So I think we should probably cancel, but let's just look at it a little further. Yeah. That's quite enough of that. So I want his hair to be a little bit browner. It's a little, uh, a little blue or black or something right now. Hong had kind of a cool grayish salt and pepper kind of color, but... Um, just for the ease of this, I'm just going to keep it at kind of a brown. I find those lighter kind of colors are, are pretty difficult to pull off. Something to do with the shadow of where it hits the head. Okay, that's looking better. Now that we've adjusted that a little bit. So we'll play with this... Um, Still not quite thrilled with the way that the hair flows, so we're going to adjust this quite a bit now. Or I may just jump ahead, but using the soft selection, we can actually move all of it in an edge distance. We can move all these, these strands of hair around pretty nice without having to worry about moving the root as well. 
So long as we actually keep the edge distance correct. There we go. A little too much pinch on that, and that, uh, the pinch will kind of start moving things a little weird. We don't want that. Okay, turn that up a little bit. To get the style we want, might take a little bit of editing, but it's not too bad really. If we get like about a 10 days for a character, I usually reserve about a day just for hair. And that little strand hanging down. Let's take a look at that fixed up, made it look what we want. I've turned off the other side of the hair just to make sure that all of this is working without having to copy and paste back and forth and back and forth. Okay, see, so now that we have a little bit of random in there, and we've moved some of these, uh, these around, it looks a lot more like hair. He's got some strands kind of going this way and that. It's definitely, uh, I'm pretty much happy with it at this point. Um, now it's just a mat yeah, that looks a lot more like I like. That, that one kind of curl is a little thick, so we'll be playing with that a bit. But overall, the look of the hair is about where I want it. It still has a little bit of that gray that Hong had. We'll move a few of these around, whoop, and... ...other that it was getting this weird kind of wave effect, and um, by cutting it and, and duplicating it, basically, I'm able to uh, make a, a new... Once again, we're going to take a quick look. It's almost there. It's, it's, it, for me, it's hard to judge what the hair really looks like just through the splines. I really need to see it rendered out. Uh, I'm sure there are many people out there who can just know exactly. So I copied from one side. Now normally this would crash, so what I'm going to do here, it may crash now, let's see. I have it deactivated, so it should be okay. But what I'll do is it'll actually copy my, my hair from, from my previous settings, which are all on the right side. So we want to make sure it's on the left side as well. And we also are going to want to change the face IDs to the correct ones. But we're getting pretty close on this hair being done. And then it's really just a matter of some cleanup and putting the rig on the character and rendering him out. And then a few Photoshop edits and uh, then we would submit to the client. <laughs> this can take a little while when there's a lot of hair. It has to generate and actually draw, um, redraw and re recalculate how the hair is growing from the, sp from the head. Thinking about doing it setting by setting there for a second, but that's a lot of work. So what I did there is I just removed the emitter and copied. And I'm going to do it again. 
and paste. Okay. Basically, having all these things selected and then pasting it can cause a bit of a problem. So, there we go. I just need to select it. I'm going to select it from a list because it would be hard to pick it on that head. I'm going to save as because I, don't, I know this might crash it. But really the trick is to actually just remove that emitter. Um, if you just do that generally, it's going to be okay. And it won't crash when you copy and paste settings between the two. So there you go. The hair's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it overall. Could use a, obviously you could keep tweaking this for a really long time. That, that one curl coming from the one side looks a little funky, but um, Overall, I think we're pretty good to go on the hair, and now it's just a matter of uh, the finishing steps, and then we're ready to go, and we're pretty much done. So I hope you learned something there. On to the next.